Good morning. At this time, we'll open up for questions for Coach. Coach to your left. Down here, Kim. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, first, I want to know how many matching outfits Sage brought for the championship. Um, I was curious if there is a comparison to Caitlin um, from film that you've watched. Obviously, you've been a great defensive coach for a long time. Is there anyone that she reminds you of? First question is um, a designer made that outfit for my granddaughter when she gave me the outfit she wanted me to wear. So I don't think there's another one. Uh, number two, I've never seen a player, and I don't like to use the word never, but I don't know that I've ever seen a player that can do uh, what Caitlin does. Um, she's going to get her points. That, that girl's phenomenal. Uh, shooting the ball, but the most impressive thing to me, now that you're talking to an old point guard, is she makes everybody around her better. You have great players that can get numbers, but she makes others on her team better. We'll take a question to your right. Uh, hi, Kim. Uh, Jim Klein, Peter from the Baton Rouge Advocate. Um, does it make your job easier facing a uh, player like Caitlin when it comes to uh, putting together a defensive game plan? No. <laughs> no. Um, the familiarity that we would have had with South Carolina would have been easier uh, just because they're in our league. Um, but just the things that, that she's capable of doing um, one minute you think you're going to guard her a certain way and then you'll watch another film and change your mind and go, ah, that's not going to work. Hopefully by the end of the day we'll come to some kind of conclusion as a staff that we're going to try this first and if that doesn't work we'll try this. She just... That's, that's my first time to see her play in person. And I didn't get to watch the game because I had to deal with y'all. When I did get out there, I couldn't take my eyes off of her. And, um, gosh, she's special. She's special. Front row to, our, to your left, Coach. Uh, Michael Cowell, WBRZ-TV. I've noticed an edge to your team this week, a sense of confidence, belief that they belong here. I'm sure that was only emboldened with the victory last night. Have you noticed that as well? I've noticed it all year. That's a personality of – that crew I get to coach, big personalities, uh, strong women, uh, opinionated women. Um, and when they get on the floor, they challenge each other. Um, and I say this in a complimentary way. They remind me of guys. You know how the guys roll a ball out, let's get after it? Um, that's kind of what I get to coach every day. They'll get on each other, they'll challenge each other, they don't take it personal. Um, they, they know they're on the same team, but it's, I guess, maybe hold each other accountable in a different kind of way, not a, so much as nice way as it is, just you got more in your tank, let's go, or get that rebound. And it just reminds me growing up playing with the guys and, and how the guys talk to each other like that. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Lisa Leslie of we need to talk for CBS. My question for you, Coach, is first, congratulations on getting here. You have won three national championships, and you've been able to figure this out. What does your team bring? And, and can you just talk about the perseverance that you guys had there in the fourth quarter with Reese stepping up big? What do you guys have to do to, to win the championship? Do what we've done all year. We can't change who we are. Um, we got back in that game last night because of defense and rebounding. And um, I just thought we took it up a notch in the fourth quarter. Um, keep doing that. Hit a few more shots. Uh, just defend as hard as you can. Rebound. I thought that um, being down 11 rebounds at half was so not normal for us. And then I finally saw in the fourth quarter, Angel and those guys just go flying in there for offensive boards. Um, just do what we've done. Coach, to your left, back row. 
Hey, Kim. Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. I'm curious, when you got to LSU, reflecting on how you built that program at Baylor, was there anything you had done in the first like one or two years that you said, like, I have to do when I get to LSU? Win one more game than they won the previous year. Uh, they won nine, and so I thought, uh, schedule's already done, so I can't control that schedule. But when we got to 10 wins, we celebrated. And then when we got to the number of wins that would allow us to have a winning season, this is last year, we celebrated. Uh, when we um, finished second in the league to the national champions, we celebrated. When we were ranked for the first time, we, ce we celebrated all those things. But no, um, you, you can't – I didn't know my team. You can't put those kind of um, – expectations, but yet you do have to give us goal, give a team goals on what to shoot for. And uh, I think we, we changed our goals as we grew and as we continued to play. Coach, we're going to stay to our left, the third row. Uh, Matthew Bruner on three. Coach, uh, throughout the season, there's been ups and downs with the defensive intensity for five straight games now, uh, holding teams to 41% or less shooting. Just what has it taken for y'all to make this run defensively? I think it's something we emphasize every day in practice. There'll be days we don't pick up a ball. Just guard people. Just, just, just bow your neck, guard people, get through screens, don't hit screens, talk to each other. Uh, and, and it's been good this year uh, for nine new pieces, nine new players, and to be sitting here playing for a national championship I would have to just say we continue to grind and get better. And uh, we've had great shooting nights, but we've had some sorry shooting nights. But the one thing that I think they really have bought into is that, okay, this is what that woman's trying to tell us. Just keep guarding people and you'll stay in ball games. Coach, we're going to go to our right, and it's going to be the third row. Morning, Kim. Uh, Scott Rabelais with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Having been on these runs before, do you look for – your team's starting to get stressed as the as the the stakes get higher, and so how how has this team reacted to to the, the the journey of going through the tournament and the games get bigger and bigger? I don't sense stress. I just don't. I think it's their personality. Um, they um, they listen. They watch film. Um, they want to play. They want to get on the court. Um, I, I don't sense – last night I didn't sense any nerves or stress. I hope they had butterflies. I hope the butterflies I had continue until I retire. Uh, butterflies are good. Uh, but stress <laughs> – I got some characters in that locker room. I don't know that they stress about much. Doug, go ahead. Hey, Coach Doug Feinberg, the AP. Um, the team you have has never been here before as a school. You've been here three times and been successful each one. So I'm curious what that experience can help you for the game tomorrow. And the second half of the question is, it seems like there's a new way to build teams. I mean, transfer portals here to stay. And in the old days with Baylor, you didn't have to go to a transfer portal, couldn't you develop from freshman through? Is that the way the game you see going, that you can bring players in who may be more experienced to get you somewhere faster than building through freshmen, sophomore, juniors? The first part of your question is it is so exciting. I don't even know how old LSU is. I don't even know when they started playing men's or women's basketball. But it has to be a long time ago. And to think – all those great players that are played that have played in the NBA and the WNBA and they never played for a national championship. That's mind boggling to me. Me being in the games, it's not gonna have anything whatsoever to do with the outcome of the game. Um, those kids aren't in my body. I can share with them X's and O's and we can go out there and prepare, but at the end of the day, they got to go play. Um, the second part, the transfer portal, the NIL, all that's here to stay. You can fight it all you want. It's here to stay. Obviously, 
the transfer portal was good to us at LSU. But you know what? In another week, kids can depart. Kids that you wouldn't expect would depart. You're seeing it every day. They're departing for probably opportunities with NIL at other schools that may seem better. Maybe playing time, maybe boyfriend, girlfriend, I don't know. They just leave. And that's the bad part of the transfer portal. So you're going to have to take the good with the bad. Coach to our right. Emma Bachelary, Sports Illustrated. With as many new pieces as this team has this year, I'm curious if there was anything specific you did early in the season to get them playing as a unit or any turning point where you saw that cohesiveness start to develop. Just practice every day. Just practice every day. Um, get in the film room every day. Um, there's no magical thing that I can tell you just happened and boy, all of a sudden we became this Final Four team. I think it was coaches who work hard, recruit hard, demand a lot, and um, we don't settle. When we have bad games or a kid plays bad, you get them in that film room, you hold them accountable. Um, but that's hard to do. Nine new pieces. Alexis Mars is all we really had that had playing experience. Um, this is this is quite a quite a run. This is quite a year. Coach to our left, Howard. Kim Howard Magdal at the next. Um, just to kind of jump off of Emma's question a little bit, you guys finished strong the way you talked about in this fourth quarter. And I wonder what are some specific ways that you and your staff build the team to finish strong. Is this a team um, that takes certain practices into account that allow it to happen? Early in the um, see, preseason, when we're starting practice, maybe the third practice, somewhere in that range, I said, I don't know if these kids can play against each other. They're going to hurt each other. And I'm thinking, I need to really, really get a good dream team, which is our guys, our college male practice team, because that's how competitive they are. That's how they talk to each other. That's how they, it's like going in the backyard and big sister's fixing to whip little sister and then little sister grows up and I'm fixing to give it right back at you. And that's how they competed. And I thought, not in a dirty way, but it's like, oh, oh I don't know about this. So uh, we did a lot of stuff using our dream team. Uh, and those guys are good. Those guys are all in this building and just take great pride that they're a part of us sitting here on this stage. Um, you just think about Alexis Mars and Angel Reese going at it in practice. What a sight. I don't know which one trash talks the other one more. It is um, competitors. Coach, we're going to go to our right, the front row. Chessie Boucher with WVLA and Baton Rouge. Coach Mulk, you've talked about how, how Bob Starkey has been a vital piece on your coaching staff. He's been a part of all of LSU's Final Four runs to get over that hump and to get to the national championship. How special is that for you? I know getting there is not what your goal is, but to do it with him. Chess, I'm going to answer that leading up. Start with this. There are head coaches who work their whole life to become head coaches. And then when they get there, they have a very poor staff around them. I've seen it so many times. Um, you cannot, as a head coach, become stagnant. So throughout my coaching career as a head coach, I have surrounded myself with head coaches who have left their respective head coaching jobs to come work for me, either for more, more money or, or bigger conferences or whatever. I want that input. I cannot do it by myself. I'm too old. I need, I need to take a deep breath every now and then. Leon Barmore was retired. That was my mentor, Hall of Fame, Naismith, coach. He comes to Baylor for three years. I need you, coach. You don't even have to go recruit. He hated recruiting. Just, just help me right here. I've had three or four more that were head coaches and came. Bob Starkey never wanted to be a head coach, but yet he's the only one, to my knowledge, that has taken an, a team as an interim coach at LSU to a Final Four. 
to have him on my staff and for me to be able to watch him speak the same language I speak tells you how good he is. He doesn't use different terminology. He observed and he watched the first couple months like how I want things done. And I think in turn, he's so glad to be back home. Baton Rouge is his home. He coached on the men's side. He got to coach Shaquille O'Neal. He got to coach Simone, Sylvia, all those great players. And um, he's never played in a national championship game. And he has made a promise to these kids that if he wins, we win a championship, and this was made long ago, he, he will dance. You know, we like to dance in Louisiana. He doesn't. He's an old West Virginia boy. Um, but he's promised them, should we win, that he will dance. Now, he didn't say what kind of dance, but we're going to hold him to that. But just his knowledge, his knowledge, his, he, he says things like a head coach. He motivates them. He gets on them. And uh, he's comfortable. And I think his, he's comfortable because I get out of the way and let him be him. Um, I don't know. It was one of you guys from Baton Rouge that wanted an interview with him. And uh, he's really good friends with uh, our administrative assistant, our secretary. And I uh, said, so, yeah, call him, interview him. He was in shock. He's like, she, she lets her coaches do that? And she goes, Bob, you just need to get to know Kim. All these people think she's a certain way. She's not anything like that. Heck yeah, she wants you to interview. And um, it's an honor to have him on our staff. Coach, we'll take a question to our left. Hey, Kim, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Um, I wanted to ask, you talked about Caitlin, but did anything stand out to you about Lisa's job coaching last night or throughout this tournament? I didn't watch the coach. I'm watching that floor, and that's the way it should be. I know y'all look at what I wear, but after you see what I wear, you need to be watching the floor on what the coaches are doing. I'm watching that floor. I'm watching how they defend. I'm watching plays. I'm watching all the things that take place on that floor. Uh, Jacques, you said <coughs> UAB TV in Baton Rouge. Coach, I was curious, did you see the video last night at Ellick Box Stadium, 12, 13,000 people that were all roaring as you won the game? Apparently, the umpire didn't know what was going on. Um, yes. And uh, as you're here, do your thoughts just for a moment stray back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, all the people that will be having viewing parties and rooting for you to finish the job Sunday? Jock, I did. Now, I, people have to send it to me because I don't have social media. So they will send it to me and they go, Coach, look at this. All of a sudden, sudden during the middle of that kid batting for Tennessee, you just hear and you see everybody standing, 13,000 people, because they got the final score. And even the guys on the LSU team came out of the dugout. Um, tell me things aren't happening at LSU that are positive. How about our gymnastics? They're in the regional finals. Um, but I got to tell this quick story. So my son, Kramer, plays for the St. Louis Cardinals. He's in AAA. They're playing in Charlotte. He's batting in the two-hole, playing third last night. And he's like 0 for 3. I think he had two strikeouts. Well, he obviously is distracted. I'll just tell it. I hope the Cardinals don't bench him today for it. But he's trying to get a score. He's got somebody, trainer or somebody, giving him scores. We're down 12, and hell, he strikes out again. So then he goes, and he's on, this is a great story, he's in the on-deck circle, and there, he has no clue, he thinks we're, we're, we're pretty much done at that point, he's in the on-deck circle, and somehow, some way, he got word that uh, we were up 10, and he hits a double. So, uh, it's a great story, he laughed, and when I left y'all last night, he FaceTimed me, and he was doing some pretty good celebrating with a few adjectives in there, and I said, shh, you're right in front of the media. Uh, so you got a lot of people that are excited. You got lots of people coming in from Baton Rouge that couldn't get here Friday. So if you have extra tickets, sell them to somebody reasonably priced. Those LSU people will um, will bomb. You know we like a good party. So I would imagine every bar is offering every kind of drink possible today to tomorrow. Um, there'll be watch parties everywhere. Um, Fun times, fun times at LSU. Kudos to Scott Woodward, kudos to Dr. Bill Tate for being our leaders and getting some of the best 
coaches in the country to come coach at LSU. Coach, we'll take a question to our right. Hey, Kim. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Network. Uh, two questions for you. It seems like uh, Lil Wayne is officially and finally on board. Uh, <laughs> I've seen he's uh, FaceTime you guys the last couple of days. Just what kind of been those those moments and conversations like with him? And then two, uh, you know, we talk about Bob a lot, but, you know, guys like Gary and your other assistant coaches who are going through this NCAA tournament run for the first time, how rewarding is it for you to have those really young assistants get to experience, you know, almost for lots of coaches, maybe a once in a lifetime opportunity? Well, Lil Wayne is a Louisiana guy. And those of you who don't know who he is, he's a famous rapper. Um, yeah, he FaceTime Angel and I was talking to him after the game last night and um, he's, a, he's a treat, and the girls love him, and if the girls love him, I love him. And anything he can do to promote our program in LSU and Louisiana, I'm all for. Um, he even likes my country music. Uh, he, he wants to use that all my, he wants to use that as a sample, he said, whatever that means, okay? So I just nod my head and say, sounds good to me. Um, Gary. Joe, Shante, come to mind on my staff. They've never been here. And the tears Shante shared, crying, just thanking me. I said, don't thank me, thank those kids. Um, Gary said he's not taking his shirt off till it's all over, he's beside himself. Gary's father was a great baseball player. For those of you who don't know it, Gary Reedus. And ironically, I used to watch Cincinnati Reds. Those were my team. That was my team in the 70s. I can still tell you every position on that field. And his dad was on that team. And uh, to have him come and see our kids uh, and talk to them. Uh, Joe Schwartz, I raised that boy. Um, you know, he and my son grew up together. And he went to UT and played for Shaka Smart and played for Rick Barnes as a walk-on to um, – watch them, um, it's exciting for them, but it's, it touches my heart. Uh, and they are young and keep me young. They do all the young things, all the things these young people like, and I just shake my head like, just don't embarrass me. Just make sure you make sure you know who I am. Yeah, coach, we got you, coach, we, you know. So it's all good, it's all good. Coach, at this time, we'll take a virtual question. Chris, you may now proceed. Your line is unmuted. Chris? No Hello, you guys can hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Hi, Coach. It's Chris Idell from Herbert and Radio in Baltimore, Maryland. Thanks for the uh, taking my question. Congratulations on the win yesterday. Thank you. Um, you've been at LSU since uh, 2021. Are you feel like you're ahead of schedule with the with the talent you have, or you feel like you're still in the process of getting LSU to become a powerhouse? I don't want to use the word powerhouse. We've won games. We've not won championships. <clears throat> Are we ahead of schedule? I think it's obvious we're ahead of schedule. We're sitting here playing for the national championship. So the hard part now is when it's all over, win or lose, you go back to recruiting, you go back to uh, trying to duplicate what you did this year and just continue on a trajectory that is positive to someday maybe winning an SEC championship, maybe winning a national championship or being what you would say a contender every year. And, uh, but we're ahead of schedule, if that's your question. <coughs> Coach to our right. Yeah, Kim, uh, Jim Klein, Peter with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Um, yesterday, Kenny Brooks, um, while uh, talking about the physical play, he complimented the officiating, but he also said it might be time for the women's game to grow up a little bit like, and go to some rules like what you have in the WNBA. So stars like Angel Reese and Elizabeth Kitley can get freed up a little bit and not be you know, surrounded by people all the time and show how good they are. I was wondering what you think about that I don't keep up with the rules in the WNBA I don't keep up with the rules in the NBA hell I do a good job of keeping up with the college rules and that's all that matters to me 
I do understand his frustrations. I think every post player that plays the game understands that. But I've, got, I've, played, I've been blessed to have some of the greatest post players probably more than any coach that's ever coached this game. And I've never complained but a couple of times. They're not going to change it. The college game is different than the pro game. And um, I understand his frustration because I've had those before, but you just have to deal with it. You have to make adjustments. Uh, but I, I can't help add to his comp comments because I don't know all that stuff. I just know what I deal with in college. And um, it's physical. And the deeper you make a run in the playoffs, it's physical. And um, yeah, I, I, I can't add to his comments. I didn't hear his comments, but again, I don't know all the rules, you know, in the WNBA. To our back in, in the yellow. All right, I'm sorry. Hi, Kim. Leah Simakopoulos with the Dallas Morning News. So you talk about rebounding being a key for your team's success this year. Uh, last night, South Carolina out-rebounded Iowa 49-25, to I believe, and still wasn't enough for them to get it done. So what's it going to take for you to be able to capitalize on that advantage you have inside against them? Well, you've got to score the ball. You've got to score the ball. Um, it was very difficult the little bit I did get to watch live, it was very difficult for South Carolina in the paint because they obviously were crowding paint <clears throat> and they allowed Caitlin to roam. She never really guarded anybody. She just roamed. And um, you gotta hit shots. No matter how many post players you have, you gotta be able to hit perimeter shots and that goes for us too. And if you don't hit perimeter shots, it doesn't matter how many rebounds you get. In our far back, on the right-hand <laughs> side. Eden Lossie, Just Women's Sports. Um, you talked about the personalities you have in your locker room, and I was curious about when you first met Angel, did that come through right away? What was your first impression of her? Well, I think Angel has told you guys this. She came to LSU for a new start, get away from some things that she's not proud of in her past. Not bad things, but things that a lot of people tend to dwell on and um, we talked about it I talk about everything there's nothing that's off limits with these kids and me when it comes to developing them and in their basketball and um, I think Angel has grown up a lot um, I think Angel um, can handle tough love I think Angel Probably she and Alexis Morris get more tough love from me than any of the players. Maybe that's because expectations are a little different, but it's also because they need it, they want it, and they embrace it. Coach Going back Mulkey. to our left, Coach. Lisa Leslie, CBS, we need to talk. Uh, Coach, uh, Sue Bird and I were talking last night that we noticed there was about several Baylor players here and how that speaks to the culture of what you're building at LSU. Can you just talk about how I think the impact of that shows how great a coach you are, as you already know, but just the culture that you're building there at LSU also? Lisa, Jim, you should ask her. He's one of the great post players of all time about those rules, but um, – there were Louisiana Tech players here that I got to coach, hug their necks, just texting me and loving on them last night. There were tons of Baylor players here that have a national championship ring and many Big 12 championship rings. And there were LSU former players here. Um, that tells you you've been coaching a long time, but what it tells you is I have more of those former players that love me that don't. When these people want to write about all the ones that don't like me, go write about all the ones that do. And that's not just for me, that's for every coach in America. And to hug them, to watch their excitement, the parents of Lauren Cox, who couldn't be here, they're screaming and loving. That's why you coach, because you realize when your coaching is over, 
somewhere you did something good. And if you did more good than bad for somebody's kid, that's what you, you feel good about. So I had a combination, Louisiana Tech, Baylor, LSU. Um, yeah, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. Had former teammates from the Olympics here. There sits Cheryl Miller right there. She sends me a, 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 a picture. And I don't want to get emotional, but she sends me a picture that Kathy Boswell sent her, who was on our team getting inducted into the Hall of Fame here. Kathy sent it to her, and it's Cheryl when we were in L.A. for the 84 Olympics. We were at her mom and dad's house, and there's her dad and her mom and all of us. And I looked at that picture. We don't have Annie Donovan anymore. We don't have Saul, her daddy, anymore. And I just, bam, it just hit me. We don't have Pat Summit, who was our coach anymore. We don't have Kay Yao, who was our coach. We don't have Nancy Darsh, who was our coach. And that's when she just said, Kim, you are a, you just, I won't tell you, Cheryl and I can talk. I won't tell you everything, but it's moments like that, Lisa. It's moments like that when it kind of hits you like, what in the world are we doing? Coach, we're going to take our last question on the back far left. Nicole Auerbach, Sirius XM. Kim, when you go from a program at Baylor where you were there for a really long time and then you're starting over, what is hard or what is different when, when you take that jump? Well, you first think recruiting is going to be harder because at Baylor, after you started and you started winning, the program sold itself. So when I left, I thought, whew, get to work. But what I didn't realize is the brand. That, those three letters, LSU, they don't mean anything else but Louisiana State University, and it's an international brand. What I didn't realize is how the portal is going to help you quicker than before we had the portal. Um, but you do the same things with the understanding that portal, they're going to come, they're going to go. Uh, get a good coaching staff that has energy and can help you recruit. But I had no clue. The timing of me going to LSU, I had no clue the impact that the NIL was going to have. And it is going to have impact at the major power, and it is having impact at the major power five conferences. And we're not talking about collectives that are internal at each institution. We're talking about these kids that want to be in these major power five conferences and they see what Flage has and they see what Angel has. I don't even know their NIL deals until they put a list out. One of y'all put a list out and I went, oh, and then they give me gifts. They're giving gifts to the coaches from their NIL deals, guys. And I'm shaking my head going, I, I wouldn't go buy this, this is too expensive. That's the world we live in now. But I didn't know the impact that that would have when I left. I just thought, oh boy, I'm fixing to start all over. But it's been a lot easier than I thought it would be because of NIL and because of the LSU brand. Thank you, Coach. Guys, be good. You're welcome. Next up, we'll be joined by student athlete Angel Reese. As a reminder, the breakout sessions in the gentleman jack room are open, and the remaining four starters for LSU are in that area. Locker rooms are closed at this time. Nope, you got a minute. We just wanted to have the, no, like, 30 seconds. We wanted to make sure that um, Dayus was good, and then you can come on up. Thank you. Yep, you're free to come. Yep. Good morning and thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. At this time, we will open up questions for Angel. Angel, we're going to start to your left with Howard. 
Hi, Angel. Howard Meddell, the next good to see you again. Good morning. Um, you, down the stretch in this game, and it, it's something, a pattern that you followed throughout your career, finished strong in the fourth quarter. And I'm just wondering, what are some specific things you do to prepare for that moment? You know, is it mental? Is it physical? What allows you to be the type of player who finishes the way you do? Yeah, so um, actually, after the SEC tournament, we lost. Um, there's pictures around, well, not going around, but um, I had gotten to the gym because I felt like I had left my team down, and I have just recently got bigger and stronger, and I feel like I've gotten in more shape. So I feel like I needed to develop a little bit more and just being able to play in those tougher situations when that does come down to it. So conditioning and strength has been the most important thing coming to LSU. That was my biggest thing. I needed to make sure that I was in 40-minute shape for one and two to be ready to be banged up in the fourth quarter. So just being able to do that physically and then mentally just staying, staying tough. I mean, I'm in a leadership role where I had to grow up quickly. I was never in a leadership role before. So being able to lead my teammates and guide them throughout this was just something that was needed last night. You're welcome. We're going to take a question to our right, the back corner. Um, Eve Mossy, Just Women's Sports. Um, I've seen a lot of little girls here cheering for you, wearing your jersey and things like that. And I'm curious, do you see yourself as a role model? And if so, what kind of traits that you have do you feel like are worth emulating? Actually, I didn't even realize like how the impact that I've made on so many little girls. I mean, sometimes like, what am I doing that you guys love? Like, what what, what is it? And I'll ask them. They're like, why why do you love me? And they said, because you are who you are. Like, you you're you're you. And that's just the trait, the, the biggest trait I carry. Be who you are, and never ever let back down to anyone. Don't ever get the no, the answer no. I don't take the answer no. I'm gonna find a way to get things done. So, I just that's always how I have been. I also grew up. My mom is a single mom. She's independent. She raised two kids. She's got me and my brother to college for free. So, being able to just look at my mom and just be like, wow, you you're somebody that I want to be like. To our left. Good morning, Angel Good morning. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, why is Kim a good coach? Can you explain it to us? Because she is 3-0 in title games. I believe she's won the title three of the four times she's gone to the Final Four. I might be wrong on that. Yeah. Um, and you guys looked like toast last night at one point, <laughs> and then she made some adjustments. But why do you as a player, we know she's a great motivator, Yeah. but what else is it beyond that? I think... She is, she keeps it real. When I came to LSU, I needed a coach to keep it real with me. Like, Angel, you're not doing enough. You're not helping the team. Like, just being able to have tough conversations. She's a coach that you can have those tough conversations with. And I don't feel like everybody can be coached by Kim Mulkey, but you need a Kim Mulkey in your life. You need somebody to humble you. You need somebody to keep you up. You need somebody to, hum like, just be there for you. And I think she's also a mom at the, at the end of the day. She also has kids that have played sports. So she knows what it takes to get to the best and to get to the top. So we've always, always listened listen to her and, and just trying to follow her because this is my first time. This is all my teammates' first time in this situation. So just being able to trust my coach. We're going to stay to our left in the front. Uh, Michael Cobble, Channel 2 in Baton Rouge. Rouge. Kind of in that same vein, you guys go at each other, mm -hmm. right? And early in the season, in the preseason, you guys really went at each other. Uh, how much does that sharpen you, I guess, iron sharpening iron, yeah. and make sure that that accountability is there? I mean, I heard you last night on the bench, you know, we're built for this. Mm -hmm. You know, like, just that push, that internal push that the players have outside of the coaches. It started, like you said, in the summertime. When we started playing pickup and we was talking trash to each other and, like, just getting each other better, I think everybody in the locker room just wants to get better. We're, we don't argue, like – Everybody takes constructive criticism, and that's that's something I've never really been a part of. Like everybody just wants to get better, and if I tell you you need to get this rebound, they're gonna tell me, "Oh, you need to box out." Like just being able to have a teammate that just wants the best for you, and I think we all see bigger things in each other. So I think that's just helped us a lot throughout the season. To our right, hey Angel Corey hey, Diaz with the USA Today Network. Uh, two quick questions for you. Uh, I guess. According to Lil Wayne, you checked him, so he finally talked to you last night. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> uh, just what you might could share just from that, you know, that conversation with him. And then, to, um, you know, you guys have gotten to the national championship game when you get to this point. And I know it's your first time, but what has been the biggest catalysts for this team? And what will you guys continue to, to draw from in order to potentially 
host a trophy uh, Sunday afternoon. Well, yeah, I'll answer that first question. That question first. Um, our defense. Our defense is what has gotten us. Defense and rebounding is what has gotten us this far. I mean, I was just telling somebody guys, our LSU is like we're like a roller coaster. We seem to always get going early on, and then we can never break the door open. So just being able to break the door open early, early on tomorrow. I mean, Caitlin Clark is a great player, and it's going to be tough to stop her from getting her points. But being able to just contain her and not letting the supporting cast, her other teammates, go off. So I think that's just something that's going to be important. And then for Lil Wayne, <laughs> he hit me up after the Miami game. Um, I actually hit him up before the game, and I told him that wasn't cool what he did. But because he's from NOLA, so I was like, that's disrespect. But he said he, already, he knew the twins from something else early on. So but he calls me. We have each other's number. He calls me whenever. I was the one that got um, – Best sound bite for the video, the video that came out for the LSU page. So we cool. I, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> We're going to take a question in our back on the left. Hi, Maria McElwain, Philadelphia Inquirer. So, yeah, you said it. Y'all haven't been here before. Um, what, how has Kim's message evolved to, to you guys as you keep winning in the tournament? And how has your message as a leader kind of changed? Yeah, for her, she's always had us, like, believing we're the underdogs, which we are. Um, we do have a lot of hype around our team and our program and everything that we bring to LSU and how we perform and show on and off the court. But I think she has just always kept us humble. I mean, this is an exciting moment for our program, and this is an exciting moment for everybody in Baton Rouge. But just being able to stay together at this right time and just keep believing in each other, that's just the biggest thing that we've been doing. And just for me, just trying to keep the, the team calm. I mean, yesterday we went down, and I'm sure – Teammates that have never been in a situation like this before were probably like, they were a little, a little nervous. So just trying to keep the team calm. Coach Bob Starkey, he's been here before. So before the game, he told me and Ladesia as the leaders, just to keep the team calm and keep them confident throughout the game. Even if we miss shots, making sure the team stays confident. Question to our back on the right-hand side. Cassandra Negley with Yahoo Sports. You've spoken about that Tennessee game a few times and how you personally improved after it. Do you feel like it was a crucial game for the team, and how has the team carried how that ended through this tournament? Yeah, I think that's just something we honestly needed. Um, it sucks to lose for sure, but I think if you don't take lessons and if you don't learn from losses, I think that's just it's not, it's not good for you. And I think coming back to practice that week, Things had picked up a lot, and, I, and just seeing how much the team responded to that loss and being able to know, like, the things that we need to get better at, I think that's just something that has sparked for us. And even the, the Utah game, I remember when I got that last foul, it gave me deja vu from that game because I remember getting that last foul call, of offensive foul call in that Tennessee game, and then I got the foul and fouled out for that, that game. Just being on those moments, I think that has just built us for this season, and I'm just happy to be here right now. We're going to take a question in our front on the right. Hey, Angel. Madeline hey, Adams, Fox 8 New Orleans. You kind of mentioned it a little bit with Caitlin, but I don't know. It's a quick turnaround. What have you kind of seen from Iowa as a whole uh, after last night's game? They're a great team. I mean, luckily, me and Katiri have played them before in the Big Ten, so I know what, it, what, what Caitlin brings to the table for sure. But just like I said, that third and fourth player, making sure that they don't go off and get their 20 points, I think that's just going to be the difference. And just looking statistically, we've looked at a lot of their stats when they win games, how they lose games. Just being able to do film right now, we have started film last night and then we did some more this morning and then getting into practice. We're just going to have to pay attention to a lot of detail. Staying to our right. Hi, Angel. Good Rachel morning. Smith, Rising Media Stars. Two questions for you. Have you given any thought to what you're going to say to your teammates before the game on Sunday? And then do you also have any insight on what Coach is going to wear? <laughs> no, I don't. I never know what she's going to wear. You, you honestly never, never know what she's going to wear. But to my teammates, um, this is what we came here for. I mean, we're in this moment. To be in a national championship game with nine new pieces in Kim Mulkey's second year, be happy for ourselves, but the job isn't finished, and we're hungry. I think that's the difference between us and a lot of teams. We're not going to stop fighting until the end, and I think that we just have that dog mentality within the team, and I think that just built on early on in the year. So just keeping the team confident. They're going to go on runs. We're going to go on runs. And just staying resilient and just being able to be calm throughout the, throughout the storm. We have a question in the back on our right. Eden Lassie, Just Women's Sports 2 for you. Um, the first is, you know, Kim talked a lot about your growth from when you got here till now. And what is the thing that you feel like you've grown the most at? And then your eyelashes are always on point. I'm curious <laughs> who you think has the best eyelashes in the league. In the WNBA or like the, the college? College? Oh, dang, I got 
got a lot of girls. All the girls be wearing them. I was just with Didi, Kalani, all them Bella girls. They they come. They come. Taya, um, this not Taya's hair, but Taya provides me with some hair. Um, uh, Hollywood luxury hair. Make sure y'all shop that. So yeah, the girlies have been doing their thing with the hair stuff and the lashes and stuff. I do my own lashes. Um, I've learned that. And then the first, the first question was. You've grown the oh, okay, growth. Yeah, so I feel like I've matured. I mean, I had to grow up quickly. Um, just being able to be there for my teammates, I didn't realize they watch everything I do. Practice can go how I go. If I come in not with a positive attitude or just not with a lot of energy, practice could go down and not be as, as energetic as it should be. So just knowing how much impact I bring to the team and I go as they go. So just being able to just do that. Hey Angel, hey Angel, Lindsay from USA Today again. Um, first of all, how do you not have an NIL eyelash deal? Oh, it's coming, trust. <laughs> trust, it's coming. My, the lady I work with, it's coming, trust. Um, what I wondered was, Julian is here. My brother, uh, yes. Yes, he was uh, on the concourse last night taking <laughs> yeah. pictures with a lot of fans. What was his um, take of your game? What was his constructive criticism? <laughs> my brother is my biggest critic. So obviously last night wasn't enough from him. And he told me I needed to get more rebounds and play better defense. But... He's happy to be here. I'm, I'm excited for him to be here in this moment with me. Um, I wish he was a tiger, but it's all right. Um, but I'm just, I'm, I'm proud of him, uh, how much he's grown as well. And we critique each other in, in our game. So I love my brother. Hey, Angel, Doug Feinberg, the Associated Press. Two-part question. When you first decided to enter the transfer portal last year, was your thought the dream of, oh my God, we're gonna win a national championship when I get to LSU? It, it wasn't LSU. I didn't, I thought I was going, I had two other options that I was going to and, and visit set up. LSU wasn't even in the question. Kateri was the one that called me and I think her daily, she called me and it was like, take a visit to LSU and see, and see how this goes. And when I took the visit, I, I fell completely in love and canceled all my other visits. So, I mean, I guess it was just God telling me the direction I needed. And I needed Kateri to tell me like, this is where you need to be. And, and we talked the other day about how there's a lot of eyeballs on this weekend for mm, women's facts. basketball and the growth of everything. Yeah. And you're one of the faces of this game. Yeah. Could you imagine what last night was for you guys and obviously the other game and Man. how much this could help the sport for think, now and the future? Yeah, I think me and Caitlin are like, we ain't heard the same class. So me and her are the top two eyes everybody's looking at, the, the, both of us. We're both great players. I think we bring a lot to the game. Um, a lot of people respect us, NBA players. Rappers, everybody respects respects us, and I think that just helps grow our game. I mean, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than LSU. It's just bigger. I feel like it's for the women's basketball, and I feel like we've helped grow it a lot this year, just being able to be who we are. We're going to take a question to our right. Hey, Angel Scott hey. Rabelais from the Baton Rouge Advocate. Thanks for the tip on where to find more hair. <laughs> um, uh, from f figuring out that LSU is where you want you to be through the season, through the tournament. What do you start to feel? Do you start? Is it is it confidence? Do you feel a, a sense of destiny? What what is the what are the what are the feelings and emotions? Where where are you guys now, after being through everything you've been through and all the games and all the practices? I don't know. I don't know how to feel right now. I actually don't. Am I supposed to be like overly excited? I don't know. I think I'm blessed for sure because a year ago I wasn't here. I was in a different situation, and I think April fifth is when I entered the transfer portal. So. Just being able to see how my life has come together. I mean, I've been through so many. I've been through two surgeries my freshman year, having high expectations, and then coming in sophomore year, being dominant, hitting the transfer portal, not knowing what it, what I'm going to do, and going away from home, which is the scariest thing in my life. So I'm not really sure how to feel right now. I was up, I didn't go to sleep till like 5, 6 o'clock because just up thinking about, like, how this is actually possible. And I don't even believe I'm sitting right here right now. So... I don't know, honestly, how to feel right now. We're going to take a virtual question. Gabrielle Lewis, your line is unmuted, and you are able to speak. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, Angel, this team seems like it has a lot of confidence um, in one another and in just your game. How does that affect uh, how you play? Um, and then also, does that will you to wins? Yeah, like I was saying a little earlier, I think we have like a dog mentality. Everybody just wants to go get it. Like no one backs down to anything. I think this team is not scared of anything. We're, we've played a lot of great players, but I think we just always come together and believe in each other. And I think that's what's gotten us so far. No matter what the media has said or anybody else, we know what we have and what we built together. And 
coming to LSU, which is one of the big goals, to just get back to the promised land. So just being able to have that confidence within each other, and I think it just helps us on the court. We'll take another virtual question. Patrick, your line is unmuted. You may begin. Hey, Angel. Uh, I'm Patrick Waring from the NBS Sports Hour. Just kind of had a personal question. Just wanted to ask you about you. Uh, is there anything about you that you would like to share that you think people don't know? I mean, obviously, we see you on the court. <laughs> we see things from social media. But is there anything about you that you would like people to know? I don't know. I feel like my life is is an open book and everybody sees everything that goes on in my life. I don't really have a personal life. It seems everything I do is highlighted. Um, yeah, I mean, I think something that people misper um, a misperception about me is that on the court, I promise you we're not friends. But like off the court, I'm cool. Like we're, we're, we're cool. And I think just even going into this year, I think that's what has made me who I am and just being able to embrace who I am because I have that mentality. I don't care about – if you don't want to be friends after, after the game, that's cool. But when I get on the court between them lines, it's, it's, it's that mode and I'm in that mode. So I think that's what kind of people, people misperceive about me, like cockiness and confidence. I'm very confident. I'm not cocky, but I'm very confident. We're going to take another question to your right. Alexis Davis, Rising Media Stars. It's very clear that you're into fashion. Um, with the current climate of WNBA players not getting sneaker deals as often as NBA players, what do you think your trajectory is to get possibly a sneaker shoe? And if you were to get a shoe, what would you want it to look like? <laughs> I would love. Um, actually, I'm looking into that right now. Um, definitely the off season, I'm going to be doing a lot of modeling and stuff. And hopefully... I can sign into a shoe deal before I leave college. Um, that's my big. That's my big goal right now, um, especially with NIO. I mean, I know I can make as much money in college, probably more than the WNBA. So that's just going to be important for me going into the league, emphasizing on my fashion. I love to dress up and love to put on clothes. So, just being able to try to find what's for me. And um, I mean, if I had a shoe, I mean, it'd probably be some low tops and. My first shoe, probably pink, glitter, something, something cute. I don't know. To Angel, our left. Angel, you can't tease us and tell us that you were considering two other schools and then not share those schools. Will you tell us? I mean, us? I can tell you all Tennessee and South Carolina. Yeah. And what was it about LSU that sold you right away? One, Kim Mulkey. I mean, hands down, seeing what she can do. And then one, I, I had goals written down, and she checked every box one of the big goals was for me to get confidence in my game and being able to be the player I was coming out of high school. I was never a five player. So going into Maryland, it was a tough, tough transition for me to have Shakira Austin leaving and then me having to play the five. That was tough for me. So going into a situation like that and then being able to play under a coach where she has gotten players in my position to the next level. I mean, she's really great at developing post players or big big guards or just just people in my position so that and then the way that they support women's basketball at LSU is crazy like you get Joe Burrow status at, at LSU I, I can't go out to eat without people all over me and just the way that they love LSU is crazy like I love the fan base there it, it's LSU if I was a regular student I'm going to LSU it's turnt like it's turnt <laughs> to your right Hey, Angel, uh, mm -hmm. Ashley Jones, Rising Media Stars. We talked to Coach earlier, and she said you guys kind of get after each other in a good way, uh, especially you and Alexis. What has it been like <laughs> to go on this run with her and then to have her as your point guard? Um, I'm, to see everything that she's been through, I mean, it's so inspiring, and I think that's why I go so hard for Alexis because I'm not going to ever let her give up. I know she has hit rock bottom before, but when she with me, she's not hitting rock bottom again. And just knowing to have a, a point guard where she's going to go get it every single night. And I want the best for Alexis. And it's going to be tough seeing her go after this year and to make her dreams come true. And I'm, I'm going to be really sad about that. But I love Alexis. She's one of the best guards in the country, if not the best. I mean, I, that's the best point guard I probably played with. And just to be how, see how confident she is, she's always just – you never know what you're going to get from Alexis. When she comes into practice, she's like hype sometimes, and she, she'll be just quiet assassin. So just seeing how much Alexis has grown throughout the, my whole year with her has just been amazing. We're going to go to our left. Dylan Sanders, 24-7 Sports. Last night, uh, Flaugé gets the steal, fast break, power step, layup. Boom, you're in the lead. What does it do for the team in that moment, just the confidence? 
And then what has Flaugé brought to the team this year as a freshman? Well, just like to go into both, her growth. I mean, that layup right there, usually you'll see her get a charge or she might turn the ball over. So being able to see her do that going, as Coach always says that she, she never goes lateral. And just to be able to see her take the ball and make that clean move as a freshman, I think her growth coming into the season, as a freshman when you're a McDonald's All-American, when you come in with all these accolades, you have high expectations. You want to score 20 points a game, but it's not realistic a lot of times when you're on a number three, we were number three, number three team in the country and you come in starting like that. So I think her maturity, she doesn't pout, she doesn't get upset. She works hard and she grinds. And you also have to realize, Fly J is a, a full-time student athlete, a rapper and a basketball player. She does it all. So just to be able to see, I can't do what she does. She wakes up at five o'clock in the morning and works out and then goes to school and then practice and then she rapping, she's in the studio. So just to see how much she has grown, matured. I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. For, Excited for her and just, she, we can't do what we do without Flage. To our right. Hey, Angel. Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Good morning. Kim keeps trying to, like, temper expectations all season. She's like, we're ahead of schedule. We're not supposed to be here. But you guys are playing for the national championship tomorrow. Did you guys look around the locker room at any point and say, like, Kim, like, look at, like, we're not ahead of schedule. Look at who's here. This is the plan. We say it within each other. But we, can't, we can't really say it out. I mean, we keep, we keep what we do in our locker room um, private. But... I just feel like that's, that's who we are. We're going to keep that chip on our shoulder. I think that's why we go so hard because it's like we have nothing to lose. We're not supposed to be here. We're not supposed to be here. And I don't care what anybody says. We're not. So just being able to be humble, she keeps us humble. I mean, I think that's just what's important and what keeps us going, honestly. Front row to our left. Um, Flage and Kateri have each done a great job defensively, right, kind yeah. of holding – star players mm -hmm. in this rundown. Obviously, you're facing a, an exceptional player mm -hmm. in the national title game. Do you feel like it's going to be a team effort? A yeah. need to be a team effort? For sure. I mean, like I said earlier, containing Caitlin Clark is what we're going to have to do. She's going to get her shots. Like, it's going to be tough on an off night. When she – I think we did statistics today. When she loses, she still gets 30. So, when she wins, she, she's averaging 27. So, just seeing – the other people, it's going to be important to guard those other three to four players. Cezano is another great post player. They have Gabby Marshall, those other shooters. And I've also seen them playing in the Big Ten before. So just being able to, like you said, it's going to be a team effort. We have to play defense together as a team. And defensing and rebounding is going to be what's important for us tomorrow night. To our back right. Isabel Gonzalez, CBS Sports. Earlier you said that everything you do is just, you know, kind of highlights and everybody sees everything you do. How does that affect you? Because obviously your journey hasn't been smooth. You had surgeries, you transferred. And then second part of the question, what are some things you do when you're not playing basketball? What are some hobbies that people might not know about? All right, for the first question, um, it's hard. I mean, I have to deal with a lot of stuff on social media, negative and a positive, but I guess that's just what comes with it. Mentally, you got to kind of stay tough, but I have really a really good support staff behind me. I mean, my coaches are amazing. My teammates are amazing. They have my back um, throughout everything. So I take a break from social media sometimes and just delete it or just put my phone down, just trying to just stay focused. I mean, this is the most important time right now, but you have to realize NIL stuff is going on, so I have to post certain things at certain times. So you kind of have to balance both, but it also is really hard. But in my off time, it's not much off time. I'm always doing something that has to do with business. Like I'm always doing, trying to see what, how I can grow myself off the court and modeling and just trying to get into that stuff. And plans, I have a lot of plans for the summer to do a lot of things and just, just ways to just grow my brand and just grow who I am, honestly. At this time, we're going to take a virtual question. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Angel, you talked about wanting to come to an SEC school visiting Tennessee, South Carolina, LSU. What about the SEC made you want to come here? And then also, can you speak to this, the SEC's run over this tournament and this season? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to come to an SEC school because of the post play. I mean, the post play is really, really good in the SEC, and I think that would get me prepared for the next level. I think SEC is one of the best conferences, if not the best conference in the country. So, being able to play with the best, I mean, that kind of would dictate where I am and where I need to get better at. I mean, of course, the Big Ten was definitely great. But just being able to see what more I wanted for myself and then just seeing able to, being able to see, like, like you said, the SEC, 
we were slept on this year. I think that a lot of people didn't think the SEC was good, and that's why a lot of people may not have ranked us high to where we were. But the SEC, we ran as deep as we could. I mean, we had two teams in the Final Four. You have to pat yourself on the, on the back for that because it's not easy in the SEC. I think every night anybody can win any given night, as you can see. So I'm super proud of the SEC, and I think right now as, as LSU, the only SEC team standing, we're going to do it for the SEC. We're going to take a question to our right. Hi, Angel. Christina Walker from Christina Girl Hoops TV. Uh, as a student athlete myself, I really do appreciate how, you know, you're always being yourself. You're always having fun, lifting up your teammates. So that's something that's very admirable. So going into this Final Four as a sophomore, sophomore leader, uh, nonetheless, what are you telling your teammates? What are you telling yourself? How are you getting into the mindset, uh, getting, getting ready for tomorrow's game? Just trying to stay focused. I mean, it's a lot of outside noise, of course, doing media and the social media and family here. And it's a lot going on, for sure. As, at, at 20 years old, this is a lot to take on. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. All the critics that say all this stuff online, like, I promise you, I don't think any of y'all could really sit in my shoes right now or any of my teammates' shoes and have to deal with what we have to deal with. So just being able to be smart right now and just being able to stay focused within the team and just focusing on the big picture, which is tomorrow. Angel, we're going to take our last question to the left. Okay. David Eichel, 24-7 Sports. Angel, congratulations on Thank a phenomenal you. season. Appreciate uh, it. Just curious from, you know, having to defend Monica Sinano, she, I think she's taken one dribble the entire tournament. <laughs> I guess, how hard is that to practice? And that, does that make an adjustment for you defensively and how you try to contain her? I remember playing her last year at Iowa um, with Maryland. She's very efficient around the basket. I mean, she doesn't miss pretty often. Caitlin gets her the ball when she needs to get the ball. Um, she's really great. Her hands are great. She has great footwork. But you got to realize we have LaDasia Williams. She takes on that, that post player usually every game because me and Susano, I might be the biggest one on the court, but I'm also quick. I'm quick. I'm, I'm a four player. I'm really a four player. So me and LaDasia are going to both have to guard her. I mean, I think LaDasia did a great job playing Kitley last night and also playing um, Utah Peely, Elisa Peely. So Day does a great job. And I mean, without LaDasia, we can't do the things that we do. So it's going to take a team effort, of course, to guard to guard Caitlin, but also Susano is also a great player to, to guard. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, guys. And best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you, guys. As a reminder, a recording of this press conference as well as the written transcript will be available at the NCAA's digital hub.